What's that? That's a swear jar. Every time somebody sweared, you put a quarter in it. Who gets the money? I don't know. We'll need it to donate to a good cause, like, uh, Dylan Mulvaney's bottom surgery. F***ing awesome. F*** you, Bob. <laughs> F*** you, Jim. Eric, I have a bag on line three for you. Can I borrow your pen? Can I borrow your f***ing pen? Will the owner of a white station wagon please go f*** yourself? We're gonna go down there and we're gonna f*** some We're gonna f*** some We're gonna do whatever we have to because we're gonna f*** some Poop. Doesn't count. Shut the f*** up! I am so proud of you mother suckers. Here, here. Refreshingly smooth Bud Light. Always worth it. What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Recording. I hope you're having an absolutely wonderful day. I've got a great news story to end cap an excellent week of bad news for Bud Light and also an exciting announcement. Today, while you're watching this video, probably between noon and two today, Central, I will be interviewing um, Bryson Gray. Uh, a rapper, um, a man of God, a, a social influencer, commentator. Uh, and the link will be in the description below for that. I hope that you'll come by and check us out. We'd love to see you. Now, terrible, terrible news for Bud Light. As now retailers have started planning to remove it from their shelves. If you, if you are unaware of how this merchandising stuff works, essentially... Uh, shout out to my, my brothers and sisters in retail and planograms and things of that nature. I've worked retail most of my life. Um, but anyway, there's only so much room in a grocery store. And not everyone, in fact, I would argue that more people than you would think are not like super loyal to one particular brand, one particular thing. They're like, oh, I need to get some beer this weekend. Well, if Bud Light has a quarter of the shelf space, it's pretty likely they're gonna grab a Bud Light. But now with massive reductions planned, that means that makes tons more room for their competitors to add different types of products, run different kinds of promotions, have some new breweries coming in, and other CEOs have started chiming in on their demise. It's like, uh, finally, everyone feels like it's okay to completely dunk on them. By the way, this is uh, kind of a, a secret, but I'm going to put this link in the description. This doesn't actually start till next week. I'm doing some summer bundles on Coffee Brand Coffee where the discounts are nearly 50% off. This is the most I've ever discounted anything. Um, I want to finish this summer strong. I want to get a lot of people to try things. I even discounted our candy and nuts. We made a candy and nuts bundle. We have our berry, orange cream skills, strawberries and cream uh, type bundles. Uh, either in ground or whole bean. Then we have a tea bundle that's massively discounted. I even discounted our K-Cups, our merch, and our cold brew. Just massive, massive discounts. You know, normally $60, 35 bucks. So uh, this sale is going to run for a couple of days, but today's the day to uh, grab it. If uh, you've ever been thinking about trying or you want to stock up, Link will also be in the description or just coffeebrandcoffee.com. You don't even need a promo code. You can just go to the link and, and buy directly. Retailers already planning to reallocate Bud Light shelf space. Rivals, uh, rival drink executives say the Wall Street Journal noted the biggest beneficiary. So anyway, ever since the these autoplay videos, Fox, Bud Light's shelf space rival drink executives say. Wall Street Journal reported Thursday that Bud Light sales might never fully regain on the ground that they have lost to the ground they've lost to competitors. Now, of course, most of us knew or know that uh, they weren't going to recover. But what's wild is now their competitors are basically coming out and dancing on their grave. The Wall Street Journal also noted that Bud Light sales continue cratering. The biggest beneficiary beneficiary of Bud Light's woes is rival company Molson Coors. Quote. There are reasons to believe that Bud Light sales might permanent, be permanently impaired. Molson Coors Chief Executive Gavin Hattersley said on a conference call with analysts that retailers are already relocating, reallocating space to other brands. Uh, and during, the shelf, during shelf resets that take place in the spring, 
with more resets coming this fall. So usually a couple times a year, they'll do these shelf resets and they're basically pulling loads of Bud Light from the shelves. The journal reported that in bars and other on-premise channels, the company gained more than 12,000 tap handles in the quarter. That's Molson Coors. 12, they switch, so what that means is they, they're switching whatever's on tap. Now that doesn't necessarily mean it was Bud Light getting replaced, but you have a set number of tap handles at a bar in most cases, and uh, I'm sure they're pulling Bud Light off it and put, replacing with Coors. The journal also went on to note that Molson Coors also said it's planning an additional $100 million in marketing spending in the second half of the year to keep that sales momentum. Well, now, yeah, there's blood in the water. So now they're going hard. The Wall Street Journal also reports that retailers are now relocating shelf space to other brands, which will help lock, which will help lock in the decline. Ben Shapiro replied, mediocre product plus worst marketing move against its own customer base in history, plus easily affordable alternatives equals brand death. An anonymous beer distributor told the New York Post on Monday about how Bud Light as a brand might never fully recover from its controversy, partially because of the nature of the beer market itself. Consumers have made a choice. The executive told the Post, they have left Bud Light and that's how it's going to be. I don't envision a big percentage of them coming back. The executive also observed that customers have had sufficient time to switch to alternative brands like Coors and Miller Lite, and they're a very similar product, leaving much of the competition to whoever is best at marketing, which is basically how it's always been for beers. And then you see this article, Bud Light shows consequences of stifling open debate and discussion, former Levi's executive now dancing on their grave. Freedom of speech, a right guaranteed in the Constitution, has been the subject of increased debate in the United States around the world, with questions over what speech should be protected and fears among some that not adhering to a specific set of beliefs could lead to job loss or reputational harm. Well, this is a fact. Even former president of the ACLU, Nadine Strassman, recently warned that freedom of speech is under attack at college campuses, libraries, governments, social media, and in the public square. Around the world, debates over freedom of speech continue to rage. Last year in Finland, a member of parliament was on trial for a social media post in which she quoted the Bible in opposition to her church's stance on gay marriage. All, and sorry, while within the United States, freedom of speech remains a constitutional right, some have experienced social consequences, even being fired from their jobs over expression, of course. Then the beer brand, talking about Bud Light, which was previously one of the top selling American beer brands, has seen plummeting popularity after it partnered with brand destroyer Dylan Mulvaney, and its marketing vice president was caught on camera, which also hurt, criticizing the brand's consumers as fratty and out of touch humor. My guess is there is no open debate and no discussion about the choice to hire Dylan as an influencer for the brand, Say told Fox News Digital. Whether you agree with it or you don't agree with it, the discussion, a rational discussion around whether it was good for the business, whether it was relevant to their brand, is one that they should have seen. Say said she was forced out from her C-suite marketing job at Levi's during the lockdowns for voicing her belief that the San Francisco public schools should open so disenfranchised children could attend school in person. Say said her views were considered beyond the pale by her colleagues at the time. So what she's saying is all these leftoids, they're the ones at the top. And, and any dissension gets squashed out. And it's, it's really easy to fall into that trap. You know, you have a six-figure salary. Um, some of these people, seven-figure salaries. And you don't want to lose that. They were considered right-wing. And ultimately, I was pushed out the door even though I was a lifelong Democrat. It didn't matter, Say said. My views veered from the Democratic Party platform, and that was unacceptable. People distanced themselves from me internally. They didn't want the taint of my views, <laughs> taint, uh, which were considered Trumpy, to affect them. All she wanted was kids to go back to school. Before she was fired, Say said she was asked to go on an apology tour, where she had to answer questions like, are you a conspiracy theorist, are you racist, and are you an anti-poker? It's like they were sending me to re-education camp, she said, but it ultimately wasn't enough, and she was asked to leave the company nine months later anyway. I mean, you see this too. Bud Light controversy comes amid shifting U.S. beer taste. We already know that it was a bad time as people are kind of switching to these cocktails in a can. Um, 
And you see rival executive expects Bud Light to be wiped from shelves in fall reset. Looking to grab some Bud Light ahead of next week's slate of preseason games? Better hurry, because it could be hard to find pretty soon. At least that's what Molson Coors Chief Executive Gavin Hattersley predicted in a conference call. I mean, it's this is all this is just negative momentum. As Outkick noted earlier this week, Coors reported a second quarter net income of $342 million. That's an increase of $47 million from 2022. Sales were also up 11.8%. Bud Light, meanwhile, was down nearly 27% in the latest sales data, while the uh, Dylan fiasco has cost Anheuser-Busch billions in market cap. Some experts have predicted that it is a permanent loss. As for shelf space, expert also forecasted this as well. Earlier in the summer, from former AB exec Anson Freerich sounded the alarm on that possibility unfolding as soon as next month. Retailers generally take sales data from April, May, June, July, and based off that data and that time period, they will reallocate shelf space, Freewix told the Daily Mail, adding retailers generally use Labor Day as a reset for the rest of the year. That shelf space will be allocated to Miller Lite, Coors Light, Yingling, and some other brands that have taken share from him. them, he added. That almost permanently then locks in this is the new norm of where their sales will be, and that's what their share of the beer category will be. It's because you guys, you know, stuck to your guns. You know, months, years, they're saying. I mean, everybody is saying, but basically, like, it's over. Nobody wants Bud Light anymore. It's tainted. They literally would have to, like, rename, rebrand to something else. And even if it, I mean, I don't even know. Like, there's other, obviously, Budweiser and, and other brands, too, under the Anheuser-Busch InBev are down. It's wild that, that uh, you all were so successful in this, and it's hilarious to me just how brutal the drop is, and uh, I'm 100% here for it. Don't forget the link in the description. Come over and watch the Bryson Gray live stream, but also pick up your summer bundles. These are insanely discounted. I mean, uh, you're getting basically three bags of coffee for the price of one. Um, I don't know if I'll ever do this again, but... Uh, you know, I wanted to give back and try to entice people to try this stuff because I know if you try it, you're just going to love it. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll talk to you again real soon.